Then you're the person to experience it, and we'll work it out from there. So uh, please bear with us while we uh, work through this process. Um, as you probably gathered, I'm the guy with the mic, and I'm, uh, well, it's mine, it's not Mike, but my name is Adrian, uh, and I'm the tour guide. I work for Goldwind, um, and I've been working on the project now for about two years. Um, first thing I'm going to do is run you through an introduction, so we have to make sure that you understand the rules. Anyone breaking the rules can't get off the bus. So um, I'll run through the list. You just have to listen. It's a bit like when you get in an aircraft and no one pays attention, so uh, please do so. Just this one. Um, so you have to remain with the supervisor and escort at all times. That's me. There will be people on site and people do but have a wander around. That's okay. Uh, there are site rules. No smoking, drug, alcohol or firearms. Anyone's brought any gun, please check it in before you get out of the bus. Um, that would be appreciated. Uh, PPE, like protective equipment, hard hats. Everyone's brought their hard hat? No. Okay. Um, that's not required because you're just visitors and if things fall on you, we've got insurance, so we're fine. Um, vehicle movement. Um, there will be other vehicles, buses in particular, wandering around. Um, just be mindful of that. You will be in an enclosed area, corralled like sheep, so uh, it should be a problem there. Um, obviously, disposable rubbish. If you've got any rubbish, uh, you're eating skittles, please put the package in the bin. Uh, site facilities, there are loose there. Hopefully you all went before you got on the bus, so I don't want anyone saying, when are we stopping, because we're not. Um, mobile phones, uh, well, if you want to take pictures, that's fine. If you want to call someone and say, hey, look, I'm at a wind farm, then you can do, but your mobile phone reception is not going to be brilliant. Okay, so don't expect to be like videoing and uploading to Facebook. Um, Sign in, sign out register. You completed this as part of your um, uh, log uh, entry. Um, I do have to do a head count every time you get off the bus and every time you get on to make sure you've not left anyone behind. Um, I know it's exciting. Uh, so, uh, um, so, first aid location. So, there is an SES there. Anyone feeling faint or any problems whatsoever, please. Identify someone, uh, go visit the SES straight away, uh, let someone know. Um, there is uh, in, in, in the event of an emergency, uh, obviously you will be directed as to what to do. Uh, probably as soon as possible. Please follow instructions at all times. Um, see anything like a hazard or an incident or there's something that you're a bit concerned about, do raise that. You know, you want to know before someone uh, has something happen to them. Um, uh, wear your vehicle seatbelts at all times if it's the buses. Mm, okay, bring up. I'll, uh, I'll leave that to discretion. So I'm, I'm sure everyone's got their seatbelt fastened. Huh? Uh, yeah, okay, right. Um, Opening and closing gates, please stay within the allocated event area at all times and do not approach gates or fencing. We've electrified them just to be on the safe side. Uh, restricted areas, no go zones, please stay within the allotted event area at all times. I think I just said that, but that's for you. Uh, livestock and wildlife. Uh, if you come across any livestock or wildlife, leave it where it is and report for HSAQ. Um, I think we're looking at things like buffalo and elephants and giraffes, but, you know, they're just, you know, they're kind of high when we do it. Uh, and any specific rules due to the site conditions today? Well, thankfully it's a nice and sunny day, uh, so we should be fine. Uh, there is the threat of lightning, thunder and lightning later, so you're luckily on the first bus, uh, and I think that one might be kicking until this afternoon. So if you hang around and so excited and want to get on the last bus, you know, there could be some delays, uh, or we might be, uh, might be cancelled. Um, now, if anyone doesn't agree with any of these, uh, silliness aside, um, please let me know. Um, you will be asked to remain on the bus because you cannot leave the bus unless you all agree. If anyone doesn't agree, can they raise their hand now? Good. Right. Uh, I think everyone agrees. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I'm still talking. Oh, okay. Okay. Does anyone want to know about the wind farm? Does anyone know what a wind farm is? Can anyone see the wind farm? Yep. Can't see it from here at the moment. If you look over to your left, maybe just through the gap, yeah, not quite. Yeah, you can just see one, just poking over the top there. I think it's a crane. I think it's a crane. I thought we'd put a little. Well, just to give you a bit of a pot of history, wind, uh, right, a wind farm 
uh, was initially developed around about 10 years ago. So it's taken 10 years pretty much from the initial sort of thinking around the project to get to this point. So what you see today uh, was initially sort of conceptualized 10 years ago or more. Um, it's just the process it takes. So the, the entire wind farm project was consented back in 2012 with the 119 turbines. But what we've actually built today is 70 turbines. Um, so we've got another 49 we can't build if we so choose. Um, we just have to find the money to do that. Um, but basically, the reason for only building 70 turbines is there's uh, a constraint on the grid um, which limits the amount of power that can be initially exported. So as we get closer to it, I'll point it out, but there is a uh, power line on your left-hand side that you'll see eventually um, that will uh, uh, basically uh, not be put on. That's just your domestic sort of 11,000 volt line. Um, actually, you can see uh, just over in the distance there, uh, crossing the fields, that's called a 132 kV power line, um, the bigger poles. And that's what the project connects into. Um, but that has a constraint. So there's only a certain amount of power that can be produced with all that going before the whole thing uh, falls apart. So we, we put the project by stages. So stage one is connecting the power line. Uh, we're actually looking at stage two. So stage two will be the remaining turbines. Um, but that will require a connection into the uh, the big transmission line, which is further out towards Inverell. So uh, anyone who's, who's local and has been from Glenys to Inverell would have passed under that big sort of lattice tower transmission line, kind of halfway between the two towns. Okay. So the project was consented um, back in 2012. Uh, Goldwyn acquired the project uh, in 2014, um, and on that basis then uh, moved into construction. So construction started. Uh, back in the uh, beginning of uh, uh, well, basically 2016, uh, last year. So it's taken us around about 18 months to get to this point by building out the 70 turbines. Um, now, the turbines you'll see today are um, the Goldwind GW121 machine. Um, GW Goldwind's 121 is the actual rotor diameter. So each blade is approximately 60 meters long. Um, I know 60 plus 60 is not equal to 121. Um, but is because our maths is wrong. No, um, that's because our um, uh, if you look at when you look at the turbine, you'll see that the central bit is is where the blade is attached, and of course that's the extra meter. That's where you you get your sort of one two one sort of methodology from. Um, the turbine's tip height is uh, 150 meters, so they're pretty impressive uh, when you see them. And you'll be able to stand on the one. We'll be going to turbine number two, mm -hmm. I believe. Three. Three. We're going to three now. Yeah. Okay. That goes to two's problematic, isn't it? No, it's has got um, crank one. Oh, right. Oh, you get to your crank. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's fine. So, um, yeah, so if you're going to turbine number three, they're all the same turbine. Um, uh, the blade's like, like 60 metres, the tower, the tower, uh, 90 metres. So the tower's in several sections. Um, uh, each. So uh, if anyone has ever saw it, if anyone see it during construction, they don't see the, the chim what we call the chimneys. So, so what you would have seen is that a lot of them went up uh, initially just as the tower section, or what we call chimneys. So you would have seen just the, the like the tubes sort of sticking out of the ground, a bit like a uh, you know a chimney stack power station type look. Um, and that's because we can use a smaller crane to do that. So the smaller crane would have gone along, a bit like you know putting Lego together. You kind of stick bits on top of each other um, to do that. Then the bigger crane, uh, which uh, 750 ton, I think. Uh, that is then used to erect the hook uh, when the missile uh, the blades. And all the blades were assembled um, on the ground by attaching all three blades to uh, the hook at the same time. So it was what's called a three bladed lift. So it's quite a complicated process. Um, it takes a lot of maneuvering. And then the crane lifts all three blades attached in one um, to the uh, to the nacelle. Um, now the entire process of erecting a turbine, if it goes swimmingly, um, takes about two days approximately. It takes about a day to put the, uh, the, the, the tower sections up and about a day to put the blades up. But of course that's all weather dependent. Um, and of course, you know, the irony with uh, construction is that when we want to actually install the project, we don't want it to be windy. 
Just can you imagine trying to lift three blades and the wind blowing it around? That's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but of course, once we finish construction, we obviously want it to be as windy as possible. We want it to blow a gale as best we can so we can get rid of all that power. So each turbine is rated at 2,500 kilowatts. Um, and what that, what that means is that uh, the combined uh, power output 2.5 times 17 is 175,000 kilowatts, 175 megawatts. Um, and that's the power that's fed into the, into the grid. Now, people talk about sort of availability and um, uh, uh, capacity factors and the fact that they don't sort of generate that much power. But what, what you're looking at, of course, is that the wind doesn't blow all the time, and we acknowledge that. Um, if you look out to your left now, you'll see the project. So we've got a bit of picture from around the hill. Um, so yeah, so the wind doesn't blow all the time. It also doesn't blow, it blows at different strengths. So sometimes um, the, the project is not generating all the power. So when we, we work out what the amount of power it's going to produce over 12 months, we, we look at the, uh, you know, the average wind speed. So we, we've been monitoring the wind speed in this area for, for 10 years or so. Uh, on site, uh, but also combine that with uh, Bureau of Meteorology data to assess what we think the expected power output is going to be over the period, and that and that's how you work out how how good the project is going to be and whether it, the project a, a location is suitable for uh, for a wind farm. Um, so obviously here would be suitable. Um, in fact, there are three projects. The hills just to your left of you now, um, that's where the Glen Innes wind farm is proposed. Um, not, people tend to get a bit confused when they talk about Glen Innes wind farm, they seem to think it's quite a lot of wind farm. Uh, but Glen Innes wind farm is actually its own little project with 25 turbines. Uh, I'm not sure whether that project is going ahead yet. Ironically, it was consented before White Rock and it was probably the last to build. And as we approach uh, White Rock itself, um, on the right hand side, you can't see it yet, but there will be the Sapphire Wind Farm. Um, and that will consist of, I think it's 109 uh, turbines. Oh, that's, and that's 25 on that right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, take the right here of Waterloo. No one can use take the right here of Waterloo. Obviously, a wind farm is not finished. Um, so that project, yeah, is, um, is under construction as well. Um, so unfortunately, the weather is not looking great, um, as you can tell by the rather inanimate objects to our left. Um, I think when we get there, if everyone could blow really hard, uh, we may get one of them. So, um, I suppose that, no, it does. Yeah, please close with that. Um, but yeah, what we found when we actually measured the wind, uh, with the wind profile here is that the winds pick up towards the afternoon and evening. It's probably why there's been this storm this afternoon. Um, and are better during the night. Um, and as part of this project as well, we're also, uh, you may have heard about the White Rock Solar Farm. Now the solar farm is being built just slightly off the left. I'm not sure how easy you will see it uh, from here. A little bit. Yeah, the, the, the front a bit further on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the solar farm is down in the paddocks, just to your left, just over this little rise. Um, let's see what we can see. Yeah, you can see. Look, it does straight ahead now through the bus. You'll, you'll get a better view as you get approach it. Yeah, um, it looks like a vineyard at the moment. That's because there's no actual panel on it. Um, all we've got is a bunch of stakes in the ground. It looks like a glorified maze. It'd be great if you could mesh between the wall and have people run around, but that's probably not the point. Take all the fun out of it. But the, um, yeah, so you can just, it's difficult to see, but, but that, um, that site is approximately 50 hectares. So 50 hectares to, take, to, to generate 20 megawatts. So, so whereas the wind farm is 175 megawatts, the solar farm is only 20 megawatts. Um, but of course what you're doing is you're concentrating all that infrastructure into one space so it's all trapped into a 50 uh, hectare area. So you can just see it on the left there. It'll look more 